What more uh, could they add here? I mean, this phone right here, this is the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 5 and this phone is almost peak perfection. So much so that it only brings incremental upgrades over its predecessor, the Galaxy Z Fold 4. Because that's the thing, the Fold 4 was already so good and similarly, the Fold 5 is also very, very good, almost perfect for a foldable. But in comparison to the older model, as I said, only incremental upgrades. So if foldable phones are what you seek and up until now you have been planning to get the Fold 4 but you haven't purchased and now you think that you should be getting the Fold 5, then what gains does the newer model bring over the older generation model? Let's find out in this video. Hello everyone, I'm Anya for Fiber and this is my review of the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 5 in this gorgeous light blue colorway. Now of course, before we get on with the rest of the episode, consider hitting that red subscribe button if you haven't already and if you love watching detailed tech videos such as this and also turn on the bell so that you don't miss any of our latest updates. With that said, let's get started. So first, uh, quickly the key specifications of the Fold 5 compared with the Fold 4 on your screens. And if you look closely, the only difference here, the only major difference here is the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chip. Yes, the inner display is brighter on the Fold 5, which I am going to talk about in a bit. There are newer generation RAM and storage standards, but otherwise battery, charging speeds, or the camera hardware also seems to be the same, at least by the numbers. By the way, the launch prices of the Fold 5 are also exactly the same as the Fold 4's uh, launch prices. Uh, so what does the Fold 5 uh, bring to the table? What new does this phone bring to the table over the last generation model? Let's go one by one. Now, similar to the last generation Fold 4, uh, the Galaxy Z Fold 5 also sports armor aluminum for the build, that is the glossy frame. There's newer generation Corning Gorilla Glass Victus 2 protection at the front, back and inside, but uh, what really sets the Fold 5 apart from the Fold 4 is the gapless design because of the new flex hinge. You see, Samsung has used a teardrop design hinge for the Fold 5 and it is also claimed to be more durable and it also puts less force on the display when you fold and unfold the device, which is great. Now I know this gap and no gap might be a minor design upgrade for some, but if you ask me, I've always desired a Samsung Fold without any gaps in between. And five generations down, I'm happy to say that uh, they have finally achieved the zero gap design. Uh, they have done it. And you know, the good part is that there is also uh, less chance now for dust and debris uh, to get inside. Although I'm still waiting for the day when a Galaxy foldable will come with an official uh, dust resistance rating. Although we do have an IPX8 rating for water resistance on the Galaxy Z Fold 5, so that is great. Now what else is good is that because of the new hinge, the phone is noticeably slimmer, again folds flat and also feels lighter than the Fold 4, although the difference is a meager 10 grams. In fact, despite being a foldable smartphone, the Galaxy Z Fold 5 only weighs uh, like 13 grams more than an iPhone 14 Pro Max, which is a normal usual run of the mill slab smartphone. So that in itself is a feat. Otherwise, button placement and ports remain the same as the Fold 4. The fingerprint sensor works fast but my gripe with it is the fact that whenever I used it with the case I have encountered a lot of false triggers. Now a simple solution to this situation like what I could have done was that I could have used the phone without the case and then I wouldn't have encountered any false triggers with the power button with the fingerprint sensor but then again we are talking about a phone that costs upwards of 1.5 lakhs and in this case a phone so expensive I would want to use it with a case right. So the case design could have been better than what it is right now. Okay, the displays. Similar to the Galaxy Z Fold 4, the Galaxy Z Fold 5 also has the same 6.2 inches and 7.6 inches dynamic AMOLED 2X panels with 120Hz refresh rate and all the bells and whistles of a top-notch panel. However, the inner display is this time significantly brighter as it features 1750 nits peak brightness versus 1200 nits on the Fold 4's inner screen. The result, well, better visibility if you're using the phone outdoors. In fact, a Fold 5 is now easily in the category of the best and brightest displays on the market, right up there with the S23s and the iPhone 14 Pros of the world. 
If you are a multimedia aficionado, you are going to have a blast watching videos or playing games on the Fold 5's inner screen. Yeah, but who would who would want to watch Netflix in such a tiny display? Oh my God, I have done that. I've already done that. Three point four inch display. Yes, I have already done that. That said, I still feel that the outer panel, if this one would have been a little wider than what it is right now, that would have been better. You see, for running apps such as Instagram or maybe launching the camera to capture a quick photo, I think for those sort of things, a six point two inch screen is fine. But for things like texting, it feels cramped while typing. Or maybe watching a long YouTube video, I feel a wider aspect ratio would have been better suited. Nonetheless, quality-wise, it is still an A-grade Samsung AMOLED panel, and wherever it falls short in size, the inner 7.6 inches panel more than makes up for it, both in terms of form as well as function. The Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 5 features One UI 5.1.1 at the helm atop Android 13. Now, one of the key factors that sets apart One UI on a Samsung foldable phone over One UI on a general Samsung phone is the ability to take advantage of the variety of gestures, multitasking features and whatnot. One of my favorite gestures is the ability to swipe from the corner or the bottom with two fingers to start running a second app in a split screen. Speaking of which, you can have up to three apps running in the split screen window, which by the way, this time around, all the three windows are active at the same time, meaning you can interact with all the three windows at the same time without the other two windows being passively active. Another cool trick is with the taskbar, which can now hold up to four apps for seamless switching. In fact, the drag and drop feature lets you pick, uh, say, a photo from the gallery in one window and paste it in the other window running a notes app or, say, a texting app. And if that's not all, the evergreen flex mode is here, which is better than ever. And for those who don't know what it does well, it lets you use your phone as, say, a mini laptop so that the main content remains on the top screen while the bottom screen features the controls and the interactive area. And overall, I think it is the ease of use, uh, the clean software experience, and of course, the myriad of features that you're getting in One UI. All of this combined, they give you a to, you know, worthwhile user experience, worthwhile software experience. And also let me tell you that just like uh, the other Samsung flagship phones that we're getting in the past couple of years, the Galaxy Z Fold 5 is also promised to get four years of Android OS upgrades plus uh, five years of security patch updates. So that is cool. The Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 5 is powered by the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chip coupled with 12 GB LPDDR5X RAM and up to 1 TB UFS 4.0 storage. There's a 4400 mAh battery under the hood with support for up to 25 watt charging and 15 watt wireless charging. Now performance wise, as you would expect from a phone that is powered by the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chip, the Fold 5 is fast. Now here are some benchmark numbers for your perspective on your screens coming up next and to also show you like what kind of gains we are talking about here when you compare the Fold 5 with the Fold 4. So in Geekman 6, the phone easily outperforms the Galaxy Z Fold 4. In fact, uh, the Galaxy Z Fold 5 is the first phone that I have seen breach the 5000 points mark in multi-core performance, which only shows that uh, when it comes to handling hard-hitting tasks that are taxing on the CPU, the Fold 5 is one of the best there is right now. But uh, that's not all, as the Fold 5 also dominated in the Antutu scores and posted 200,000 more than the Fold 4's score. Again, I was really impressed by the GPU performance here, which only makes the Fold 5 one of the top capable smartphones to run the most demanding of games out there. Even in 3D Mark, which is a game simulation benchmark, uh, while the stability scores of both the Fold 5 and Fold 4 were almost neck to neck, the average loop score was again better on on the Galaxy Z Fold 5. But moving on and keeping aside the benchmarks numbers, even when I talk about the real world performance of the Galaxy Z Fold 5, well, this phone does not disappoint. So One UI 5.1.1 is clean, responsive and buttery smooth. There were no bugs detected and overall I can go on record and say One UI is the cleanest and the most feature packed Android skins out there. Handling usual day-to-day -day tasks like calling, texting and browsing the web were handled with ease but what's really impressive is the improvement that the phone brings when it comes to thermal management. 
So much so that not only does the Fold 5 run cooler than the Fold 4 when performing hard hitting tasks such as uh, playing long sessions of games, but uh, because the thermals are kept in check, there were hardly any moments where I detected any sort of throttling. That said, the battery life of the Fold 5 is still kind of the same as the Fold 4. I mean, the optimization on this phone is great, but uh, surely a higher battery capacity than the 4400 mAh that we're getting here, I think that would have been slightly better. Now, in terms of numbers, a one hour video watching session on the inner screen drained about 7% of the battery in my testing, while a two hour video watching session with mixed usage on the inner and outer display drained about 13% of the battery. Similarly, an hour of gaming drained about 17% of battery on the Galaxy Z Fold 5. Lastly, the charging speeds, as I said earlier, are capped at 25 watts. And I was really expecting that the Fold 5 would also get charging speeds as my Galaxy uh, S23 Ultra, where I'm getting 45 watt of fast charging. So uh, definitely this phone takes a lot of time for a full charge from zero to 100%. So 45 watt charging at least would have surely worked wonders on the Galaxy Z Fold 5, but here we are. Now on paper, the Galaxy Z Fold 5 features exactly the same uh, camera hardware as the Galaxy Z Fold 4 as far as the megapixel count is concerned. So on the rear, there are three cameras, a 50 megapixel primary lens, a 10 megapixel telephoto lens with 3x optical zoom and a 12 megapixel ultra wide angle lens. Now on the external display, there's a 10 megapixel selfie snapper while the internal display holds a 4 megapixel under display camera. So I took a few comparison shots from the Fold 5 camera and the Galaxy Fold 4's camera and according to me, I think so the camera upgrade on the Fold 5 comes down to better camera tuning. Take a look. So this photo was taken in broad daylight and everything that looks oversaturated in Fold 4's image looks fixed in Fold 5's image. For instance, the sky's color in the Fold 5's image looks closer to what I was seeing with my eye. Even the glass below the Mediaplex text, there's a blue tinge throughout the glass in Fold 4's image, while the Fold 5 has exposed the color quite accurately. Now this other shot was taken during the golden hour and at first glance looks quite similar. However, look closely and the white balance in the sky's color is ever so slightly in Fold 5's image better, I think so. The shadows around the tree leaves on the left or even the greens of the tree on the right are again managed slightly better on the Fold 5. Now this is a very slight difference but uh, this photo of the leaves has been captured quite good. I mean the green color looks very accurate here. Of course, I'm talking about uh, the Fold 5 image. Other than this, just look at this picture. While shooting comparison shots, I mostly found Fold 5 photos to be noticeably sharper than Fold 4 images. Something that is also noticeable in this photo of the rock. Now selfies also both in terms of details as well as the skin tone preservation turned out better on the Fold 5 but uh, generally also the Galaxy Z Fold 5's camera performs quite admirably in a variety of light conditions giving you photos that are social media ready be it clicking human subjects or general photos the results from the Z Fold 5's camera are bang on uh, be it in terms of colors contrast or dynamic range plus you also get the versatility of the telephoto and the ultra wide angle lenses and the best part is that the color disparity across the three lenses is negligible which is great now coming to photos taken at night or not so favorable lighting in a few cases the fold 5 can struggle to get the color of the sky right as seen in this photo however in most cases i found the fold 5's camera to produce some well-defined shots with vibrant colors and contrast and by no means it feels like the camera's post-processing makes the scene look brighter than it actually is in fact give it a decent amount of light and trust me the fold 5 will not disappoint now selfies taken from the 10 megapixel front facing snapper turn out really good both in terms of preserving detail as well as handling the facial tones. However, night selfies taken from the same camera could use some tuning especially when it comes to details. I mean, not that the details are bad in a photo but hey, we are talking about a phone uh, that starts at 1.65 lakhs. But again, you can always use the rear camera for selfies with the external display acting up as a viewfinder. That way you don't even require to use the 10 megapixel front facing snapper. So this is the rear facing uh, video recording on the Galaxy Z Fold 5 in 4K 60 FPS. Uh, this one can shoot up to 4, uh, 8K 30 FPS videos. But I think the so 4K uh, 60 FPS is the best uh, quality that you can get out of the Z Fold 5. And this is the kind of quality that you get uh, as you must have just seen 
Stabilization is on point, pans and uh, everything are so smooth. Uh, colors of course are uh, a bit on the saturated side, but I think so they look more saturated on the Z Fold's uh, screen. But if you uh, look at it uh, on a normal screen, I think so the colors are just about fine. Uh, stabilization is on point and everything else, HDR performance, dynamic range in the video. Uh, I think so overall uh, video quality on the Galaxy Z Fold 5 is quite good. How does my audio sound? Uh, let me know everything in the comments and next up is the selfie video recording. So right now I'm recording from the front facing uh, 10 megapixel snapper on the external display of the Galaxy Z Fold 5. Uh, this phone can shoot up to 4K 60fps video from this uh, front camera and uh, it can also shoot uh, HDR 10 plus videos by the way. And this is the kind of quality uh, that you are getting uh, from the Z Fold 5. Uh, what do you think about it? Uh, I think so. The field of view is uh, quite good. It's quite wide. Uh, stabilization is also on point. Colors look great. HDR performance is also quite good. I will just show you. So as you can see, my face is properly exposed even when I'm standing against the light. Yeah, a little bit of, uh, you know, highlights a bit exposed on my forehead. But I think so, it's quite uh, sunny over here in NCR. The overall performance is quite good. How does my audio sound? How does the overall uh, thing look to you? Let me know in the comments. While throughout the video, I compared the Fold 5 uh, with the Fold 4. Let me tell you, this phone is simply not for Fold 4 owners who are looking to upgrade because Fold 5 and Fold 4 are more or less the same smartphone. Uh, the Fold 5 is surely the more uh, refined one but still, it does not warrant an upgrade over the Fold 4. That said, if you're looking to upgrade from say a Galaxy Z Fold 3 or a Galaxy Z Fold 2 or even the original Galaxy Fold, in that case, the Galaxy Z Fold 5 is a substantial upgrade and I'm talking in regard to all aspects of the smartphone. So the Fold 5 is slimmer, lighter and durable and has a zero gap design with an IPX8 rating. It has probably one of the best and the biggest smartphone displays you can get right now. One UI 5.1.1 is optimized well for the foldable form factor and offers one of the cleanest Android experiences. Plus the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chip brings super performance gains and the camera is almost on par with the top camera smartphones in the market right now. So if you have the money and you want to purchase a brand new foldable smartphone, well this the Galaxy Z Fold 5 is the one to go for. Fiber 8, the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 5, a solid 8 out of 10. But uh, yes, guys, uh, let me know your thoughts about this smartphone in the comments below. And uh, what other changes do you think can Samsung implement in the Galaxy Z Fold 6 that might come next year? Let me know everything in the comments below. And as always, for all the latest in tech, stay tuned to Fiber. I'll catch you all in the next one. Thank you for watching.